All right, folks, welcome back. We got some classic looking gameplay that is modern somehow. This is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon being played by Mr. Cap 55. Want to take it away from here, sir? I guess I'll take it away from here. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Uh, as uh, we, we just said, this is a modern game, despite this amazing 8-bit look to it. Uh, this is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. You might have heard of a game that was kickstarted recently called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. This came out about a year ahead of time. It's, uh... Well, let's... Let's get started before I keep talking forever, right? This is supposed to be a speedrun. We're playing on ultimate mode. We're playing with the veteran difficulty flags, which just gives me knockback and stuff. Uh, and the timer's gonna start when we actually begin moving. Uh, this game does have a plot. I'm gonna let scroll by just to be super, sh super sure my Switch does not crash. This game's out on basically every modern console, including Steam, so you get, you get your choice. So, uh, this is sort of the Castlevania 3 to Ritual of the Night's Symphony of the Night, and it's just a great game. Uh, this being ultimate mode, rather than our hero here, Zangetsu, being stuck in the sort of Belmont power walk of NES lore, uh, we have a dash button, we have a double jump, we have a charge slash, we have this little arcing slash in midair. We, so we basically get all the good stuff. Uh, in order to get this mode, you actually have to beat the game once with Zangetsu only, and actually kill the allies you're supposed to recruit. And so uh, you basically have to be not a per nice person to unlock this mode, but once you have it, you uh, get to use all these cool abilities, the game is a little more fun. So that said, this first stage, there's really not much to it. Uh, so we're just kind of going over some mechanics, I guess, here. Uh, unlike some of the old Castlevania games, you can hold up on the stairs. I'm supposed to be holding a charge slash. That's the one other thing we have right now is this charge slash. Which is useful to take down these cannons in one hit and a few other things. Uh, a lot of enemies in this game, this is going to be a mechanic that's going to come up an awful lot. When you use your slash and you kind of start moving into their hitbox with it, you can start getting double hits. And that charge slash, uh, is, it's basically going to stack a lot. So we want to use that too. Unfortunately, we have 19 weapon energy right now. You probably heard Friedland in uh, the Castlevania 1 run just now talking about getting down to zero hearts. There's a similar thing going on here. This whip goes in multiples of three, so we're going to be stuck with one at the end of this. So this is uh, the Glutton Train. We are lacking a suplex, so we have to just stab it a lot. Oh, come on, jump. Wow, uh, okay. Well, that was unfortunately slow, but it's not too bad. Uh, one other just neat thing about this, every boss in this game has a desperation attack. It looks really bad. I'm pretty sure almost none of them will kill you in the normal game. There's one where there's like a pit present on the screen, and that's a bad spot. Stage ends, we continue. So uh, I did mention you had to, uh, to unlock this mode, kill the, your potential allies instead of recruiting them. Uh, since we already have all those abilities, we're going to recruit everybody. So this is Miriam. She kind of fills the fulfills the uh, Belmont role of this game. She has a whip. She throws daggers. She has a scythe that works a lot like the cross does. And she has one other weapon that we're going to see a lot of. Uh, she also comes with a slide, like some of the later Castlevania games. And that's going to come in handy. We're going to see some immediate... Uh, low hanging passageways that we need to get fit through somehow. So yay. This game, I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, Freeland did say like Castlevania 1 was an easy run to learn. This was a run I kind of picked up watching Bobby the Blacktastic and Streiser as they were getting ready for uh, Streiser's SGDQ run this past year. It's just a great category. Uh, there's a lot of other categories for this game, obviously, with the different difficulty modes. And just different strats for them all. This is the hardest jump in the game, so let's see what happens. You made it! Cool. If you uh, fail that jump, you go back to the waterfall room, and you get to start playing this stage again uh, just without Zangetsu. 
So without all of our double jumps, without our charge slash and everything else, and all of our good movement tech, and it's just not fun anymore. So uh, now that I've jinxed the run thoroughly, we'll just carry on. So the rest of this stage, I mentioned there was one other thing we're looking for. Uh, the next room, we're going to pick up the really big axe. I don't know its real name. We're going to call it the really big axe. Miriam has uh, this big axe attack through from uh, these blue candles. They have all the sub weapons. Don't slide. Thank you. So why do we have this axe? Uh, just for context, right? Zangetsu's normal sword slash does four damage. Uh, the charge slash I think does something in the range of like seven or so. That axe does 25. That's a lot. And yes, uh, this run is also no out of bounds. We'll talk about that more in a minute. This boss is probably the more technical one in the game. So we're kind of throwing this holy water-like uh, demon tag attack here and just getting in, in close. Every time she's getting hit here, it kind of stuns her, slows her down. She got off the screen. Oh man, I didn't have full weapon energy. That's my bad. There we go. I was a little more than an axe short. Now, this is technically uh, slower, but it looks cool. Just cut it in half. You can dodge that, uh, juke it up to go high. Every time you don't get hit by the desperation attack, you get an extra life. Useful if you need an extra life. So yeah, there's your swag kill. Now we get to recruit Alfred. So if you're uh, familiar with Ritual of the Night that just came out, I believe this game is kind of not in the same timeline, but you should be recognizing a lot of these characters. Uh, Alfred, as I understand it, is more the Sypha character. Definitely we're going to see a lot of ice coming up soon. It's the first thing we really want to get out of him in this uh, stage. This stage is also a scary one. One of the la later screens in the stage, we're going to have uh, one of these friendly spike crushers. The spikes aren't instant death. This is not a Mega Man game, but we are going to be getting damaged by spikes a lot as we uh, get through there and the goal is to skip a cycle so I want to get through here taking as little damage as possible while also getting myself up to uh, full weapon energy if at all possible there's our ice Oh, that was unfortunate. We're in good shape, actually. Only missing two health should be okay. Next room's the spike room. So what you're hearing right now is me getting nervous and quiet. But let's do this. Yeah, this is not happening, so let's just kind of be safe here. This is a little safe, uh, scary with Miriam, because she does jump a tile higher than everybody else. It's something to keep in mind when you're stuck into the spikes. We're going to see a lot more of why it's important that Miriam jumps a tile higher than everybody else pretty soon. Uh, the last stage, you saw me pick up a kind of glowing blue orb thing. That is uh, increases my max weapon energy by 10. That little heart there gives me an extra two max hit points. Good times. So uh, why do we want that giant ice sword out of Alfred anyway? I mean, you already saw it was useful for jumping off the golem, but when you do hit a boss with it, or really any enemy, well, that's not gonna make it. Train of thought gone. When you strike an enemy with uh, the ice that's frozen, uh, it takes double damage. So you take that 25 damage from the axe, which is already a lot of damage. And then you double a lot of damage for a lot more damage. I think that's what I'm allowed to say on stream. Just a lot more. 50 damage is a lot of damage. So basically most of the bosses the rest of the way are going to be freeze it, axe it, freeze it, axe it. 
I'm calling the Twitch police right now. Be right back. Oh my. Uh, you're lucky if they're busy right now. What's up? No. Well, I, I said you were lucky they were busy. Oh, okay. We're good. We're good. So we just recruited Jeeble, the uh, early villain in Ritual of the Night. In this game, he is not Alucard in any way, shape, or form. Don't even think about calling him Alucard. That would be copyright infringement. He's definitely not... Go oh, God. So, uh, he's Alucard. That is going to kind of uh, fulfill the rest of our movement tech for the game, though. Just being able to turn into a bat and get through really a lot of tight spots. This is also a very vertical stage in a couple of screens. So this double jump obviously comes in a lot of handy. In a lot of handy? Is that a phrase? It is now. Several screens where it's just uh, use the double jump, switch to Jeeble, and continue. I kind of lovingly call this the improv room, just because I'm not really sure what to do with it most of the time. Oh, I think I've worked something out now. It is actually faster, uh, by I think a few seconds, to go on the top route here. Uh, this room, though, is free, and I haven't bothered to learn the top route yet. I really should. But uh, here are the flea men. We're through this room. It's only a couple seconds lost, but going this way. And there's also a damage boost strat down there. No, I'm thinking of a different room. Whatever. We're double jumping. We're going. Again, this stage, just lots of vertical screens. Come on, get up here. I'm really low on weapon energy right now. This should be okay, though. Uh, this boss actually is one of the easier ones, and actually... Uh, our boy Jeeble has one other unique property, as I'm looking up and seeing, I actually do have full weapon energy now. Any uh, purple lantern he hits actually turns into a five weapon drop. So I did mention that I kind of got back into speedrunning this game, or really into speedrunning this game in the first place, from watching Streiser at SGDQ. So just shout outs to Streiser. This boss looks big and scary. It's actually pretty harmless if you come in with the right stuff. I should also mention this stage. Uh, this is the no out of bounds category. If this was the out of bounds category, we would have skipped like two minutes of it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, zip tech in this game that makes a lot of the game just kind of not even exist. It's a lot of fun to watch it. Uh, there's a Discord for this game, you know, it's available off the speedrun.com page. You guys know the drill. Uh, pop in there, the community's great. They'll help out answer all your questions. And then you can uh, run the Zipful version of this. I'm just a fan of playing game, playing, uh, you know, the whole stage out. That's just me. Play the game the way you want it. Speedruns are fun. Play video games. So if you are a fan of... Ritual of the Night, you should enjoy this music. So, uh, this, like, I don't know what else to call this aura that Zengetsu has here, but, uh, what it really does is it makes Zengetsu do one extra point of damage with his attacks, which is really useful for, uh, those enemies in the first room, because it's just enough to actually get the kills in with one hit. So let's just let's keep going here. Oh, at least we stayed up. You ever have those rooms that you're just improv on and it's like, I think I know I'm going to get through this room. Let's see if it works out. So this is, now it's the next room through uh, sort of, I guess, the boss door here. This picture frame of destiny. Uh, it does have a dive attack that will one-shot you, so it's kind of dangerous. Uh, there is a strat to use the stacking jump charge slashes. Uh, we're going to do the free version. 
super safe version of that, of killing this thing, makes it trivial. Ice on normal enemies in this game is just not fair. Uh, so when something is a little screwy, we're just going to use that. And just one more time. When you use uh, this little power-up, Super Saiyan Aura, Zangetsu is usually just frozen in place. You can jump and push the button at the same time and at least get some uh, forward progress out of it. Hello, Bone Dragon. So the end of the stage is just another... Uh, well, I guess I'm not double jumping right now. There we go. Just lots of double jumps through masts, because I guess you can do that. This is the boss that gives you the double jump in Ritual of the Night. And we do have sort of the classic rain mechanic here of getting slightly pushed to the side as we go. We're getting a three swoop pattern. That's good. There we go. Let's get rid of some uh, spare weapon energy there. That pit is still active. This is the boss I was talking about earlier where there's one that you can get knocked off the ledge and still take a death even after the boss is dead. And there's our castle. So from here the enemies are still... It, they feel like they're a little stronger. I think they're just completely separate enemies in the first place, but we're also going to get a neat little upgrade early on in the stage. Sort of negates the, the uh, need for us to be able to do one extra point of damage. Oh, I got the jump again. Whew. Okay. Dang. Gauntlet! Give me my extra offense. I need it. I believe most of my attacks do an extra point of damage now. Again, the jump one tile higher, suddenly be able to make the double jump. Okay, that was freaky. So this jump's a little tricky. Hopefully I don't have to mash buttons. Cool. Pretty easy to miss that, just not get enough height and have to emergency switch to Jeebel to fly out of it. Just marathon safety there. Ow. So every uh, character in this game does have their own life meter. They actually take damage and actually lose lives independently of each other. Like, you have to lose all four characters before you actually lose uh, one of those lives equals. So when you do start getting in trouble, or if uh, Jeebel takes a hit, that's actually absolutely fine. They can tank some damage for you. That's why also in the uh, that spike crusher screen all the way back in stage three uh, made Alfred, poor Alfred, take a hit. Let's do this the, uh, the easy way. It's supposed to be the easy way. Never change strats in the marathon, everybody. So this is okay. We only need 30 energy to take down the Bloodless Vampire. And we should have a lot more. This room, at least it has a lot of health in it. This is Bloodless. This boss has a decent amount of RNG because I need platforms to be able to jump up and actually do some damage. Wow, okay, this is happening. We did it! Ah, that's okay. 
jumped way too soon. But we can't die there, so it's fine. We just miss out on that precious extra life. So stage eight is uh, the library. There's a lot of stuff going on this stage. It's probably the one that's the most clumsy for me so far, he said before losing the run in the last stage. So we're just going to be getting weapon energy wherever we can here. So here's the armor. This is a marathon one. I'm not going to attempt fate. I'm going to collect the armor so everything does one less point of damage, one fewer point of damage. English is a language. Now, this is just another room where I'm just playing this way too safe. You can actually get up here with Jeeble and the bat and just kind of dash through some of the early arrows. Damage boost up there a lot faster than actually taking that enemy out. So apologies for giving you a slow run today. Please donate anyway. So you do want to ice the fire golem and go through it. You can do a damage boost though with one of the toads. Cool, that's a room. Those purple flames, obviously, the fire shoots out, and especially with the conveyor belt, it's just really hard to figure out how to line up your jumps. We have a little bit of the Castlevania 1, you know, NES style jumping where once a jump is made, you're pretty committed to it. The double jump does at least give you like one out. And if that doesn't work, your option is to switch to Giebel and hope you can turn into a bat in time. Oh boy. This wall up here, I believe the game wants you to use the giant axe. We're going to use the charge slash instead. And we're going to be happy that we uh, are up to 40 weapon energy. And that's definitely a room to make sure you have enough height. Stairs, hello? Uh, if you don't have enough height there, you will just get hit by one of the fairies. You get knocked into the abyss. It's not fun. I did say uh, stairs, please, a minute ago there. This is like every other NES Castlevania game, right down to the fact that stairs are impossible. Stairs are still the final boss. Do not anger stair boss. That's why there's a lot of staircases in this game, too, that you can jump at, hold up, and hope for the best. Uh, in a marathon setting, you definitely want to at least, you know, make sure you're really sure you're going to land properly. This was the boss that I completely hosed up in practice. Which makes me really glad I was able to do that application of pure cheese here in the marathon. Getting off that ledge, not getting hit, getting on the ground makes that explosion a lot less laggy, so get used to timing that. I believe the Zipful version of this stage gets here with a lot less weapon energy, and I've seen people uh, kind of applying the charged slash stacks up against the wall there. You get the last bit of damage in, but certainly you can show up with 40 weapon energy and be done with it. Final stage, let's go. So uh, this is fun. Wait until you're past these stairs and hold up. Easy, right? So we got the uh, fire wheel there. It's not quite the invincible fire wheel. But it does let us go through these locust swarms, which is really useful. So the other thing I need to do in this stage, oh, is 
does not die, for one. For two, I need to get Zangetsu's whip back. Well, that was health I would have liked to have gotten it. Oh well. The final boss of this game, uh, you want the whip strats. Let's, let's get that, that's good. This is an annoying vertical screen. Doing that double jump trick even in the final stage. Cool. Good, we got it. So we're gonna do the free version of this state this room. Just use the fire wheel. You can get through that room pretty... It's not that bad when Zen gets you, but it's another one of those rooms where if one thing goes wrong, it's going to all go wrong. Free one up. I cannot for the life of me remember this boss's name. I believe it's Remory. So, uh... Remory likes to throw the swarm of locusts at you. The swarm of locusts is, you know, kind of nice. It's kind of easy to just cut down. Fire wheel still works there. The fire wheel for the final stage is just indispensable for those locusts. And our final boss here likes to throw these, like, giant blades at you. So having a shield is really nice. Also because our boss's weak point is high in the air, we want the whip. Time to go to work. Uh, time is on the final hit. Nice. Uh, so that's Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. It really does carry over, at least if you ask me, somebody who doesn't play too many Castlevania games, it feels like it's a Castlevania game. Uh, it's not too hard to pick up. This is a game I would just recommend play this game, if nothing else. Speedrun this game, because it's just fun. Was that a minute faster than practice? Yeah, you had a 27 last time, remember? This has been a week for me, so I don't even remember. <laughs> it's quite all right. Needless to say, uh, this was better than your practice run, and that's pretty good. That's good, because I immediately said that uh, that was going to be my best run of the day, <laughs> and it wasn't, so that's good. That, that's just yeah. how bad it was. I thought I was in the same minute as my PB while I was in practice, and no, I wasn't. This is not a PB, so we're good. Oh my goodness, thanks for having me. Support Calathon, and uh, yeah, keep watching all these awesome speedruns this weekend. I, I, Thank you, you need to give me an outro. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> are you done, or are you done, sir? I am done. That's a longer rant that stream doesn't need to deal with. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, oh, for having me. Enjoy the marathon. Yep. All right, folks, stick around. We have upcoming next is an exciting race for you all of The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening on the Game Boy Color. Yes, not the, re the recent remake. We're talking about the old school original that was remade from the old school original. You'll see what I mean when we get to it.